the bugs don't get it immediately. If you do it in the summer or the spring, there's already bugs that like to eat it. And you saw me uh, putting the bamboo over the fire. I thought originally that's a sort of jump starts the, the curing process and that it was kind of hard on the bamboo was my original thinking. And I did uh, uh, some performances for a bamboo congress in India and one of the scientists said that, well, in fact, it changes the starch content when you heat it really hot. And it's nice because the, the green bamboo doesn't crack when you, you make it so hot that it's not possible to touch it. And it changes the starch content so it's not so delicious for all the bugs. <laughs> so a uh, couple of reasons why they, they heat it up. But the time to pick it is, is uh, November to December. So when I get back, I'm probably going to head to the mountains and get a few pieces. Uh, one other thing that's quite interesting is bamboo is the fastest growing plant on the earth. And after four years, it's mature enough to use it as a building material. And in fact, four or five years is the best time when it's kind of young and flexible rather than seven or eight years. It's better to harvest it earlier it's less likely to crack down the line. So, thanks. Show the Yeah, let me introduce introduce the drum to you all and show show what it's made of and all that. So, so this is the drum that you saw in the documentary. This is one that my dad and I actually made together um, about a month ago in Japan. So, um, what it is is it's made of the same bamboo flooring material um, from China. And they first make these uh, two millimeter layers of, of bamboo, and then they create this thicker, you know, uh, number of them stacked together for a thicker layer, and they steam and bend the bamboo. And then if you look closely, you can see these lines here, and it's kind of like a drum. So it's, it's I mean, it's like a, a barrel. So it has these, it's like staves. So that it's made up of 20 of these staves that are each cut at an angle so that they fit together perfectly to form this shape. And uh, he got the idea for this drum from the African Udu, which is a ceramic drum and it looks kind of similar to this but is more of a, a circle with a spout at the top of it and you can get the same sort of bass tones out of it. Yeah, go ahead. Where can we buy one? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, actually, I'm in the process right now. My dad has been trying to make these, sort of mass produce these, so that um, they can be for sale. And it hasn't gone so well. There's been a lot of speed bumps. But um, I'm looking into helping him out and sort of making that happen. So hopefully within the next few years, we'll have, we'll have something, some sort of production line figured out so that they can actually be for sale. But in the meantime, um, if you email me or you know get in touch with me somehow, I'll add you to a list where I'll, I'll send out a mass email when we are ready to start providing these drums. So, thank you. Anybody else got any questions? You look like you had a question, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> are you both ready? What's that? Are you both ready? Yeah. Yeah, you ready? Yeah, here we go. All right, well, I guess we're ready. So without further ado, let me introduce the man you all already know, John Kaizen Neptune. He's going to play a song solo first. So uh, the instrument was not like this is the Japanese bamboo flute shakuhachi and it gets its name from the actual length of the instrument kind of introduction. Didn't happen, but that's what it is. It's 1.8 Japanese feet and that's ishako hasun. And so it gets its name from the actual instrument's length. Uh, it has only five holes and you might wonder, most of us have 10 fingers, why are there only five holes? Well, uh, since if my computation is correct, 
I began in 1971, so in another couple of years, it will be a 50th year anniversary for having started the shakuhachi. And I still don't know why there's only five halls. <laughs> but it does point up to something that's really unique about Japanese culture in general, and that is quite often in the performing arts, things are deliberately simplified. So the reason there's even the instrument itself is kind of uh, a very unique. Uh, most of the world's flutes have at least six holes. And of course, Western flute has so many that you, know, you need the mechanisms to close them and, and cover the hole itself. Uh, the shakuhachi is quite unique in the arrangement of the holes and also quite unique in the material. The bamboo is relatively thick and this thickness of the, the material allows you to have a sharp edge with quite a wide area before it gets too deep. So uh, the actual material of the bamboo had really helps out in terms of the overall uh, sound that you can produce a, over the instrument. It's somewhat similar to blowing over a Coke bottle, essentially, just slightly more difficult and refined. <laughs> and uh, most people can get a sound if you can make a sound out of a, a bottle like that. But the positioning is very difficult, so they say it takes three years to learn how to shake your head. Well, after almost 50 years, as I mentioned, I'm still shaking my head. Why am I playing this difficult instrument? But maybe to the extent that it is so simple is to the extent that you have such a wide variety of sounds that are possible on it. So the learning curve is a little tricky, but uh, it can take you a, a long way. I would like to play one piece uh, before David joins me on the drum for some original music. And I normally play on the longer uh, 2.4 just because I really like the husky sound. I prefer to play acoustic, but maybe with air conditioning I might use the mic a little bit. But the 2.4, it's a fourth below. Uh, it's, it's an in A and uh, really lends itself to the meditation type of sound. And my favorite piece, uh, you heard parts of it and in different concerts, is this nesting life of the cranes, where in the middle of the piece, there's some wild crane type sounds, and my interpretation of, of what the cranes sound like. And I've seen uh, uh, actually 10,482 cranes in a reserve in Kyushu, a southern island of Japan, and let me tell you, they really make a ruckus. So even though I can make some pretty wild sounds on this, it's nothing compared to the natural sound. But nevertheless, the shakuhachi is uniquely suited to making a lot of natural sounds. And in fact, as I mentioned uh, in the documentary, the first thing that excited me about the instrument was the really huge thrashing breath sound. Now, I want to do just a quick little thing. I did a workshop for Okano Sensei's uh, students uh, who I started with uh, at the Buddhist Study Center uh, near the UH uh, music department. And uh, I did a, a workshop for them. But one of the things I forgot to do was to tell them about my practice method for the muraiki or the thrashing breath sound. So give me just a moment, I want to focus on these students here, and you'll see my approach to it. For instance, in one piece, you might have three places that you would make this really wild sound. So if the piece is four or five minutes, it takes you four or five minutes just to play this tone three times. Well, uh, what I did, well, I set up a little exercise where every note with the open hole fingerings from the bottom to the top, uh, two octaves. I would play the thrashing breath sound four times. This will be on the printout that I'm going to give you. And the first one is as short as you can make it, but sustain the tone. Second one is maybe like 30% and then sustain the tone. So then the third time you play maybe 70%, it's just wild air. And then the last time is all you do is you just make this wild breathy sound. And so when I first started, 
like everybody, you go, and you know, it's not coming out. But if you practice this every day, and this was one of my five things that I want to do but can't do, and you, uh, five, not five things, but five minutes practicing. And so the idea that I wanted to share with you uh, before I start to play the piece is the that that sound that so excited me when I first heard it and sounded so wild and still does to me. So short and sort of in Western music you say sforzando sounds something like this. Then if you sustain it afterwards, uh, then you're going to have more control. But you kind of have your lips going more into the flute. Uh, you relax them a little bit and you open up and go, Whoo! but it's a lot more than that. Okay, so then 30%. Maybe 70. And then one with just only the breath. That's it, but that's only for one note. You go to the next note. Et cetera, et cetera. And you go all the way up to, for both octaves. And so that's on my chart, but I want to demonstrate that for those of you who are struggling to make this sound. And at first, again, don't be discouraged. Almost everyone goes. But you have to loosen up the embouchure. It's, it's almost impossible to describe it. But if you do it every day, someplace down the line, maybe a week or two later, uh, once in a while, some of my students used to say, oh, you should have heard me playing last Wednesday. It was really sounding good. I go, yeah, but today is Friday afternoon. Man. In any case, uh, again, my f favorite piece is this Nesting Life of the Cranes. Uh, every single note is important, but this idea of one sound enlightenment, for instance, uh, when you gargle and you have a sore throat, this is a big part of the imitating the cranes. So there's a lot more than one note, but each one is, each phrase is important and the, the silence between the notes, you'll be able to focus on the air conditioning and the other natural sounds. Okay, this is the nesting life of the cranes.
story. How old is this one? Um, it was made by a maker who passed away about 80 years ago. And since I've had it for, since 1971, it's well over 100 years old. But check this out. A friend of mine moved into, I bought a shakuhachi through uh, Rick Tremilios, who went to Japan to study garaku and bought a shakuhachi for me. And after playing for two weeks, I went to a friend's house in Waikiki. Uh, it was a new apartment, a furnished apartment, and this shakuhachi was under the couch when he moved in. So, when I played it, after only having played my shakuhachi, the one I got from Japan, for two weeks, I couldn't tell if it was any good or not because I couldn't play very well. But after two months, I had a chance to play on it again, and I went, oh, this one's, it's, this isn't okay. This isn't too bad. So I had just uh, got done with the Diamond Head Crater Crafts celebration where I made these bottles that you can shake and they glitter and it looks like the, you know, the Saturn is rotating inside them. I resined a, a shell on top of it. I sold them for a dollar a piece. And I had a pocket full of $1 bills, like 26 $1 bills, right? And so I said, would you like to sell this flute? And he said, okay. And I said, I'll, he says, what will you give me for it? I said, I'll give you $20 for it. So I went one, two, <laughs> three, four. I, I counted out $21 bills and I bought this flute. Now, in between there, I tried to sell it and I bought really expensive flutes, like $5,000 expensive even back in the, uh, you know, the, the late 70s in Japan. Uh, but I wasn't getting quite what I wanted. It wasn't working. And no one wanted to buy this instrument, so I used it as my experimental flute. And the experiments worked. And I sold all my expensive flutes and started only playing on my own. So this is an old piece of bamboo, but like for the original hole was here. I've moved it down so far, you know, that it's, it's you know, not in the original position. So it got changed a lot, but this was found by a friend under a couch <laughs> in Waikiki apartment. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right, David, we are ready. Oh, no, you got the headband and everything, the beanie. Now, now nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. <laughs> I'm really honored to be playing a song with my brother here. <laughs> He's very kind to me. So the shakuhachi, if you play, if you noticed when I did the, the meditation piece, the honkyoku, I have to use a lot of half holing and quarter holing. There are two traditional five-tone scales. One is called in senpo, which is a kind of a city scale. And you all recognize. But unless you hold open just a little bit of a hole, you can't make that scale. So this is called in senpo, and of course, if you're playing shamisen or koto, it's a different kind of technique. You don't have to do the half holing technique that, like shakuhachi. But the folk music scale is quite different. No half steps between any of the tones. This is like what shakuhachi was made for. However, the, in the old days, the komuso and, and most of the honkyoku do not use this. So it wasn't until Meiji Restoration that the shakuhachi was really found in that folk music tradition. So a little over 100 years ago. But I was listening to, you know, all the different areas of Japan have a unique folk music tradition. And I was listening to my home, hometown of Kamugawa, the piece is called Kamogawa Yanzabushi. Listening to that, and I said, oh, I should take some hints from that and write a piece. And so I did, and I called it Kamogawa. And now David is going to play on the bamboo drum with me, uh, as well as uh, on the shakuhachi, of course. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you? Is that, is that live? 
Okay. Maybe just a little bit of support will be, it's a little bit dry in the room. I prefer not to use a mic, but it's probably, this is a venue where a little bit is. Okay, you sure? Okay, here we go. Can you hear it? Yeah. yeah. wasn't very Japanesey. Uh, nevertheless, the scale was the what suits the shakuhachi, the yosempu or the folk scale of Japan. Now, actually, through half holing and quarter holing, I can play a chromatic Western scale as well. Uh, you, like on a keyboard instrument, you hit all the uh, white keys and the black keys in order, and you get. <laughs> So you could possibly play Western classical music 
if you wanted to. Normally I don't play, but <laughs> Mozart would also be very surprised. <laughs> so to say that anything is possible on the shakuhachi is not really true. There, there's a lot of things that don't work very well for five tones, and there's two minor thirds within this, so it's a, it's, it gets a little gooey when there's a lot of chromatic work. However, there is one non-Japanese scale that suits the shakuhachi incredibly, all the open hole fingers, except for just, I add one half hole, and I end up with D minor blues. So here's the folk scale. I add one no extra note. So I wrote a piece called Blue Bamboo, and it goes like this.
Thank you. For the last planned uh, piece that I was going to perform is a piece I called West of Somewhere. It's actually a very early composition, I think 1978 or so, before David was born. So um, in this, it follows sort of an Indian tradition where you explore the scale. And in this case, I'm using that same exact folk scale, except for the second note is one half step higher. And so here's the folk scale one more time. I just raised the second note a half step, and it totally changes the flavor. So very easy to play, but a totally different sound. And at this point, I think some of the shakuhachi players uh, in, uh, who came to the documentary, they brought their shakuhachis. So we want them to play a drone for us, just the lowest note. So if you can pull out your flute and let's, uh, let's play some music together. And, uh, Let's see, are, are we around to the outside of the, yeah, David's going, wow, where did this come from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't heard this trick yet. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's no rhythm, essentially. Just take a nice big breath and just blow a nice row. And since I have to play above you, uh, I'll be using the mic, but uh, you, don't, you don't have to blast away. This is, oh, give no me problem. a nice, drone that you find in Indian music and uh, it will be kind of fun to play with everybody. And do you guys want to, if you want to play high octave row and maybe play a chi once in a while in the low octave. Well, the bagpipe is more like this. <laughs> okay, so no bagpipe shakuhachi tonight. So, okay, so can we get a big roll? Here we go. And continue as you go. Okay, let's let it sit a 